Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will be looking at mangroves in the Caribbean. The term mangrove refers to a tropical vegetation which comprises a number of medium height trees and shrubs that have adapted to live in coastal regions where mud and silt are deposited and which are periodically flooded by salty seawater during high tide. Mangroves develop special adaptations to this harsh environment. For example, mangroves keep fresh water in their system by closing the pores in their leaves as well as turning their leaves away from the sun to keep the moisture in. Mangroves filter out salt at their roots. If any salt enters the plant's system, the tree excretes it from the pores on its leaves. Mangrove roots are designed to collect oxygen and nutrients from the mud and water around them. Mangroves also reproduce by dropping their seedlings or propagules into the water for the tide to disperse them. The propagules only take root once they have found water that is not too salty or too fresh and where the ground is stable enough for them to take root. There are many types of mangrove species, the most common of which are the red mangrove, the black mangrove, and the white mangrove. Each species has different morphological features that help them to survive and even thrive in their specific environment. The red mangrove usually grows closest to the sea and low tide mark. They have red tilt-like roots that grow above the waterline, which allows oxygen to get to the roots. These roots are called crop roots. The black mangroves grow in muddy, wet areas at higher elevations than the red mangroves. They have roots that grow in the sediments below the waterline, but breathe with snorkel-like tubes that project upwards from the mud and carry air from above the water to the rest of the root system. The white mangroves grow on dry but salty land at higher elevations than the black mangroves. Their roots are not visible. In fact, they lack special root adaptation. They are very salt water tolerant. Salt is sent out of the plant through the leaves, giving the underside of the leaves a white color. Now let's take a closer look at the red mangrove. The red mangrove dominates the part of the coast most affected by tides. Notice the large prop roots that stick out above the waterline. This way the plant is able to breathe. If you look carefully 
you will notice also that the prop roots are reddish in color, hence the name red mangrove. The prop roots also serve to support the red mangrove in the loose soil. Now, red mangroves have shiny and pointy leaves, which are green on both sides. They also have cigar-shaped propagules that help them to reproduce. Now, this one is the black mangrove and is located at higher elevations which are only flooded by high tide. The woody projections that you are seeing are the pneumatophores, which are separate roots that help with gas exchange, since the very wet soils in which the plants are rooted are not well oxygenated. Their leaves are pointy and less shiny and has a gray back. They have propagules that have a teardrop shape. Now onto the white mangroves. These are usually found furthest inland and at the highest elevation. Notice in the picture that these mangroves are rooted in solid ground. However, they still get inundated with salt water from time to time. They usually do not have specialized roots like the others. They can be easily identified by two glands called nectaries at the base of each leaf, which get rid of excess salt. These leaves are round instead of pointy and are shiny on both sides. They have the smallest propagules of all the three mangroves. Now, mangroves are useful to us in a number of ways. Mangroves play a very important role in the food web of coastal areas. The decomposition of their leaves provide food for bacteria and fungus. The rotting plant material, soil water, fungus, and bacteria makes up detritus, which provides food for the marine organisms, such as crabs, shrimps, and oysters. These marine species, in turn, provide food for larger species, such as the snook, sea trout, and mangrove snapper, which, in turn, provide food for brown pelicans, blue herons, bottlenose dolphins, crocodiles, and humans. Besides providing food, mangroves serve as spawning grounds as well as nurseries for young fish. They also help some organisms to find protection against predators. Mangroves are the first line of defense for coastal areas. They stabilize shorelines by slowing down marine erosion and providing natural barriers which protect coastal communities from increased storm and hurricanes. Mangroves are regarded as land builders. The intricate prop roots of the red mangrove 
as well as the new metaphors of the black mangroves, retard water movement, and trap suspended materials, which include soil and organic matter. The accumulation of this material causes the build up of soil. Continued build, sorry, continued soil buildup, particularly by mangroves along the shoreline, will extend the land seaward. Now the tangled root system of the mangroves help to filter runoff that may include pollutants. In the process, they act as a natural sewage treatment plant, absorbing nutrients such as nitrates and phosphates found in sewage, making it safe to be flushed into the sea. In large amounts, these nutrients can harm the organisms in the sea by encouraging the rapid and abundant growth of plants that will use large amounts of oxygen, leaving very little for the fish and other animals in the sea. Mangroves, therefore, reduce the amount of sediments reaching the sensitive coral reefs and the seagrass beds from being smothered by silt brought down by rivers and streams. Mangroves serve as a living laboratory, providing opportunity for education and research concerning the ecological and medicinal value of various types of plants and animals within the mangrove ecosystem. Since the mangrove is a habitat for many species of finfish and shellfish, mangroves are also important fishing grounds and are therefore important for the fishing industry within the Caribbean. Mangroves also offer recreational opportunities such as sightseeing, boating, swimming, and sport fishing, as well as bird watching. Caribbean countries can therefore earn in income through ecotourism. Now, unfortunately, mangroves are not always properly managed. And in fact, in many parts of the Caribbean, mangroves are being destroyed, which means that the benefits they offer are also being destroyed. Mangrove forests have often been cleared to make room for agricultural land, human settlements, and infrastructure. Mangroves are also being cleared for tourist developments, shrimp aquaculture, and salt farms. This clearing is a major factor behind mangrove loss. Additionally, there has also been an over-harvesting of man mangroves. Mangrove trees are used for firewood, construction wood, charcoal production, and so on. Harvesting is no longer sustainable and in fact is threatening the future of these ecosystems. 
dams and irrigation reduce the amount of water which reaches the mangrove forest. This changes the salinity level of water in the mangrove. If the salinity becomes too high, the mangroves cannot survive. Since mangroves are fishing grounds, they, are, they also suffer the problem of overfishing. With overfishing, certain organisms can become extinct and this can also upset the ecological balance of the food chains and food webs within the mangroves. Not only do mangroves help to keep coral reefs safe, they also are protected by the coral reefs. The coral reefs provide the mangroves with protection from the strong currents and waves. If the corals themselves are destroyed, then stronger than normal waves and currents will reach the coast and will undermine the fine sediments in which the mangroves grow. This can prevent seedlings from taking root and wash away nutrients essential for the mangrove ecosystem. Mangroves require stable sea levels for long-term survival. They are therefore extremely sensitive to the current rising sea levels caused by global warming. Mangroves require large quantities of fresh water to reach their growth potentials. A decrease in rainfall in the Caribbean could therefore reduce the mangroves growth potential. So what are some of the ways that we can try to sustain our mangroves? For one, we can try to do more research so that we can improve our understanding of the mangrove ecosystems and therefore be better equipped to respond to their needs. We can also carry out a public education campaigns, including doing field trips to mangrove areas so that people can develop their awareness of the importance of mangroves and how we can care for them. Additionally, we can start a tree planting program. The seedlings can be developed much faster faster in nurseries instead of waiting for the indefinite time frame for them to develop and take root in their natural environment. Now, what are some of the ways you think that you can help to preserve mangroves? Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, to share, and to subscribe.